Before we start today's show, we have two days left in the month of July. and We have some ground to make up in our subscriber battle with the Chiefs report. So let's get the competitive juices flowing now before the season gets underway. Hit the sub button down below if you want to beat the Chiefs this year. The Denver Broncos quarterback competition has taken a turn. They may not come out and say it word for word, but it is so obvious to anyone who's got even a heartbeat that's followed this team for the last couple of days or weeks throughout training camp and really over the entire summer. So the Broncos have had a steady diet and rotation of all three quarterbacks rotating evenly with the first team offense. Monday it's Stidham, Tuesday it's Knicks, Wilson's on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. So today, if you can just follow a calendar, it was Zach Wilson's day with the first team offense. Except it wasn't. The Broncos skipped Zach Wilson's turn with the first team offense, and they gave it to Jared Stidham instead, which I also think is somewhat important that when having the decision to face with which extra quarterback should get the first and which quarterback should get the extra day with the first team offense, they pick Stidham. But that's really not the major storyline I'm pursuing right now. For me, it's the fact that this three-horse race, which, to be honest with you, and if you've watched our content for a few months now, on this channel at least, it was never a three-team, a three-horse race. I always felt like it was Stidham versus Knicks with Zach Wilson very far behind. And now that has kind of come through with an action speak louder than words example. Sean Payton did speak to the media after practice today. Zach Stevens tweeted out, Will Zach Wilson get time with the first team moving forward? Sean Payton, we'll see. Nothing to announce with some pauses in there. And the pauses reminded me of a previous media session when he was asked about some of the highlights that he had seen from his three quarterbacks. And when it came turned or when it came to Zach Wilson's turn to say something nice about his, you know, new quarterback, he struggled. He like paused for six seconds and gave a very political answer of just kind things to say, trying to boost his quarterback's confidence, but really didn't have anything like honest to say. He had to think for five to six seconds on one good thing he has seen from him. This also, I'll say, shouldn't be a surprise. I don't know if anyone truly felt or thought that Zach Wilson was in legit consideration to be this team's starting quarterback. I always looked at the Zach Wilson trade as, hey, Here's Sean Payton, a longtime NFL coach who's a disciple of Bill Parcells and is taking something from Bill Parcells, which is if you have an opportunity to go get a previously very high, highly drafted player for a cheap cost, just go get that player and see if you can fix him and get him back to his pre-draft stock. And I think that's what Sean Payton was trying to do. It was a low-risk, high-reward potential but I never viewed Zach Wilson as a legitimate candidate to be this team's starting quarterback. Now, when it comes to Bo Nix and Jared Stidham, reports coming out from the last few days of training camp have really highlighted Bo Nix's mobility. We haven't seen a ton of downfield passing from Nix. Been a lot of short, intermediate, kind of check down-esque passes, but that's kind of true for all quarterbacks. But Nix has really flourished when using his legs to go, you know what, if there's nothing downfield, all right, I'll tuck it and run. And that's been a big highlight so far from Bo Nix. Now, ESPN recently put out an article with some of the report cards and notes they've heard from training camp. And here's what Jeremy Fowler had to say on Bo Nix. People I've talked to with the team aren't shying away from the notion that Denver feels like it has something in Nix. Sometimes with rookies, you get lines like, he's coming along, or rookies need time. Not in this case. The line is a variation of, He's impressive. The Broncos have been very happy with his ability to process information, his quick release, his accuracy, and the poise you'd expect from a 61-game collegiate starter. I mean, that's exactly what Broncos country and what this entire front office and regime was signing up for when they drafted Bo Nix. They knew that he would be able to walk into this offense and be able to pick up the playbook quickly. The guy's a coach's son, which I know is the ultimate cliche, but in this case, it is true. So he lives, breathes, and everything football. He constantly consumes film. He is always putting himself in a position to be successful. Even if he's not the most physically gifted athlete on the field, 
I do think there are some really, really good high upsides to Bo Nix, and those are coming through early in training camp, where you might see some other quarterbacks struggle to read a defense and know based on alignment where to go with the football and what the smart play is. And ultimately, that can lead to a lot of early mistakes for a rookie quarterback. But when you've got 61 starts in FBS under your belt, a record, you've seen almost every possible look and angle possible in those 61 games. So it's not uncharted waters for you when you step into an NFL huddle and you're delivering a long play or you're delivering a long play call and you get up to the line of scrimmage and the defense shows you a new look. Because to you, with 61 starts, chances are that's not a very new look. That's probably something you've seen before. So that's definitely a big pro for Bo Nix early on in training camp, which I'll remind everyone, it is early on. Now, having said all those nice things about Bo Nix, which I noticed some of you is a big surprise, Jared Stidham, and it's not just my opinion, I wouldn't say it's a consensus, but you polled enough boots on the ground reporters who are with this team day to day, and most people are going to tell you Stidham has the slight lead for this quarterback battle. If there was a game tomorrow, I think Jared Stidham would be the starter, but the good news is, and I don't know if that's necessarily good, but there is no game tomorrow. We've got five weeks until week one in Seattle. So there is a lot of football to be played. There's three preseason games. There's three, four weeks of training camp remaining. Like We are a good amount of ways away from week one in Seattle. So while Stidham does have the lead right now, we all know at some point Bo Nix is inevitably going to take over that starting role. Like They didn't draft him 12th overall to have him sit for all four years of his of his. Uh, rookie contract. Um, unless Jared Sidham comes out and looks like the next Tom Brady, like that's just not going to happen. And I don't think we're going to get the next Tom Brady out of Jared Sidham. So the question then kind of snowballs into this. Will Bo Nix start no matter what? I've seen a lot of people in the comment section saying, we know what we have in Jared Sidham. We've seen Jared Sidham. Why not give Bo Nix a shot? Because he's obviously the future. And I don't think you're wrong for saying that. We have seen Jared Stidham. I'll say it hasn't been a huge sample size. The guy has started four NFL games. You can make some opinion on someone after four starts, but I don't think you can make a concrete opinion after someone on, after four starts on someone. But I will push back on the idea of, hey, Bo Nix is the future, so why not start him now? Bo Nix should not start until he is ready. Ready to make more than just a couple of throws at the NFL level ready to go all four quarters of taking in Sean Payton play calling, which is notoriously some of the most difficult in the NFL, whereas Stidham has a leg up with a whole year with the Broncos last year, starting two games for Sean Payton. Like, those are just live reps and experience that Stidham has that Bo Nix doesn't at the NFL level. So I don't think that Bo Nix should start no matter what just because he was the 12th overall pick in the draft. There are numerous examples that point to sitting a quarterback being a good thing, and then numerous examples of starting a rookie quarterback being a good thing. At the end of the day, it's a case-by-case -case area. But I'm not in the camp of Bo Nix was the 12th overall pick. Does not matter what he does in camp or what Stidham does in camp. He should start week one no matter what. No, if Bo Nix is not ready, don't start him just for the sake of starting him. Have him sink, get flustered, and all of a sudden his confidence gets shot. No, wait until Bo Nix is ready, and that might take a week, it might take a month, it might take two months. I don't know, that's on the coaching staff to answer, but I don't think they should start him until that day comes. Now I'll let you guys predict it in the comment section for me, who will be the week one starter? We used to have three names here, I tossed out Zach Wilson, Jared Stidham, or Bo Nix. I ping-ponged back and forth, my gut still says Jared Stidham will be the starter week one. But man, it's not going to take a lot for Jared Stidham to get yanked and Bo Nix to get tossed on the field. So I'll stick with Stidham being the week one starter. But my guess is Bo Nix will be starting games in September. All right, next up on the show, John Elway was recently on the Part of My Take podcast. And he was asked what his biggest regret as a GM was for Denver. And we're going to share that answer with you in just a second here. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. If you love summer baseball and want to catch a Rockies game or an upcoming Broncos preseason game or a concert in your area, you're going to want to give Game Time a shot. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app 
actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. Now, one thing I really like about game time is they offer the game time guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app today and use code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T sports for $20 off. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's get back to John Elway and his appearance on Part of My Take, which is a Barstool Sports podcast. If that's not your thing, it's my favorite sports podcast out there. Uh, they do a great job, and they always have some really exciting guests on. And on their last episode, they had John Elway. And in that episode, John Elway was kind of broached about, hey, when you were the GM of the Broncos, it wasn't like word for word, what was your biggest regret or mistake? But Elway kind of brought it up somewhat naturally himself talking about the 2018 draft. And here's what he said. Last year, I played golf with him being Josh Allen. And I'm wondering, how long is it going to take him to realize that I passed on him and took Bradley Chubb instead? And it took him two and a half holes, and I loved him. But it just didn't work out. He was my type. That was probably my biggest mistake of my GM days, not taking Josh Allen. I, I do feel for John Elway. He's a Broncos legend. And it's unfortunate that things didn't go superb as a GM. Like, he was the GM when they won a Super Bowl. But ultimately, I think the unanimous consensus is he probably should have gone out while on top, and that would have been like 2015. And instead, for people that are more in my generation that really didn't see John Elway play, like my memories of John Elway aren't so much as the player, but more of the GM. And that's unfortunate because I think that takes away from all the greatness he had on the field. So it's a little bit of a generational thing. But that one little part of Josh was my type, we know you have a type, Elway. I'll say the quiet part out loud. John Elway's type was tall, white quarterbacks with big hands. Look at the three quarterbacks he took in rounds one or two of the NFL draft as a GM. What do they all have in common? Minimum six foot four. I think that was Drew Locke's height. Brock and Paxton were both six seven. And yeah, neither any one of those three quarterbacks have had phenomenal NFL careers. Like I don't even know who you say would have the best career. Would it be Brock or Drew? I mean, Drew's career isn't done yet, so I guess we'll go with Locke. But you look at Josh Allen stacked up against them, and, man, I mean, if Elway got his way one more time, fourth time's the charm. That's the old saying, right? Instead, they don't go with Allen because it didn't work. Well, not in the exact order. It didn't work with Brock, Paxton, and then Allen, and then they go to Drew. So I guess not three in a row, but still. You, you could feel for Elway a little bit because had he stayed on that trail, it would have worked the third time. So I guess it is third time's a charm. Um, but instead, they went with Bradley Chubb, who, I mean, five-year career in Denver, four and a half years, I guess, 144 tackles, 33 tackles for loss, 26 sacks, six forced fumbles. Like, Bradley Chubb and Von Miller were an incredible duo. It's unfortunate that an injury to Von one year and an injury to Chubb another year didn't allow them to be on the field for longer together. And that would be one of those what could have been if the Broncos had Chubb and Von Miller on the field together for more than just like, like I would say, a combined two seasons of games. It could have been a little bit of like Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis from the Colts. I used to wreck it on Madden with the two of them coming off the edge together. So it's unfortunate that that was robbed. And that's something that Elway can at least kind of use as his defense, which was Injuries stink, and injuries got in the way of those two being an incredible duo for longer than they were. But I would agree with that way. Biggest mistake, unfortunately, Josh Allen could have been a Bronco. He's a West Coast guy, went to Wyoming from California. It would have been right up his alley to stay in the Rocky Mountain region. But, well, that's the NFL for you. All right, before we get on out of here, I just want to show some love to those of you that commented on our last video saying when you first became a Broncos fan. We had some awesome responses that went way back in the history books. Phil Morgan going all the way back to 1962. Bob, 1964. Pawpaw, 1965. Uh, Jeff watching 
and uh, watching us and watching the Broncos all the way back to 67. We've got also Lou Thomas in 67. Uh, Bobo Yo, I don't think I pronounced that one right, but 1968. Dion Sharp, longtime viewer and commenter on the channel, 1971. Appreciate you, Dion. Chris in 1973, Mark in 75, and D Day uh, just a couple of decades later in 1976. So we will put the script. Uh, we'll put the script back on you guys. First Broncos game you ever went to. Let me know in the comment section the first Broncos game you ever went to, whether it's a game that you were told you went to, like as a baby, or a game that you actually have a memory of going to. Let me know down in the comment section. As always, we will wrap up the show with some summer hot takes, which will be coming to a close in the nearest future. Uh, another scorcher in Denver, over 95 degrees today. So another it's a dry heat hot take. And this one might not be popular, but I'll say it. These Olympic Games haven't had the same draw or feel as previous ones. Not sure if I'm the only one on an island with this or if other people are quietly feeling the same way. I feel like the Olympics sometimes can be very time sensitive, like what you're doing in your life when the Olympics come on. I mean, 2016, for example, I was a freshman in college. I had all the time in the world. Like I would watch the Olympics over doing my homework every single day in August. But that's not the same when you're a little bit later and you've got a job and it's not as easy to, to sit back and throw the Olympics on. So maybe that's just a product of me kind of being a full working man for these Olympics where in 2021 I was as well, but those Olympics always seemed weird because of COVID. But yeah, I, again, I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way or if there's other people out there, but these Olympics, they just feel a little bit like boring to be honest and just not as uh, drawing as previous ones.